Number 55. Suppose you drop a rock into a dark well, and using precision equipment, you measure the time for the sound of a splash to return. Letter A. Neglecting the time required for sound to travel up the well, calculate the distance to the water if the sound returns in 2.0000000 seconds. Okay, so let's draw that out. So we have a, a rock, and we're, it's being dumped into a well. Okay, so here's the water, and it is traveling down, right, with some velocity. Now, since it said it was just being... Uh, uh, it was just being dropped, we can assume that the initial velocity at the start is zero. There's no velocity imparted to it. And what's going to happen is we are going, it's going to travel, right? It's going to make a little splash sound here. And the problem is assuming that neglect any time for the sound to travel up the well, that the sound will return in two seconds. Okay, so that means that as soon as the rock hits the water, we perceive the sound and we're just going to assume that the speed of sound uh, was negligible, all right? So basically what that means is that the time it took um, for this, the time from the point at which we hear the sound to the time at which we perceive it is exactly identical, or I should say the time at which the sound was created to the time at which we were gonna perceive it is the same. So this should be 2.0000 seconds all the way back up, okay. So what else do we know about this? Well, the rock is in free, flow, uh, free fall, right? So the acceleration is due to gravity, negative 9.80 meters per second squared. All right, let's also write some of the knowns. We know the initial velocity, as we said, was zero. We know the time also is 2.0000 seconds. And uh, what else do we know? Uh, we don't know the displacement, <clears throat> nor do we know the final velocity when the rock hits the ground. But what are we looking for? Well, it says calculate the distance. So see, it sounds like we're looking for the displacement, right? The x. Now, we know the acceleration, we know the initial velocity, we know the time, and we want to find x. So which formula relates all four of those variables? Right, the second equation there on the top right. So let's write it down. The displacement is equal to the initial velocity times time plus one half of the acceleration times time squared. So the displacement here right, is going to equal the initial velocity, which was zero, so that whole term goes bye-bye, plus then one half of the acceleration, which is negative 9.80, multiplied by the time, which they told us was two uh, seconds, 0. 0.0000, right? So the displacement now <clears throat> will just be, oh, just realized as I was looking back, we got to square that result, right? Don't forget to do that. That's where you lose, that's where the points hurt when you make a silly mistake. So 0 0.5 times negative 9.8 times 2 squared will come out to be about negative 19.6, right? So negative 19.6 meters. Okay, so that is the distance. Assuming that there's no, um, uh, assuming that uh, the sound time, the sound wave is negligible, okay? So now it says for part B, it says now calculate the distance. Okay, so same thing, we're going to calculate the distance. But taking in, into account the uh, the speed of sound now. Okay, so uh, why don't we draw another picture here? All right. So we have this picture again. The rock is being dropped. Okay, it's going to travel down and it's going to make a splash. But now remember, if I call this the time um, in which the rock is dropped as time zero, then we know that the rock is going to fall. It's going to make a splash. And then the sound wave that's produced has to come back up, right? So let me just, that sound wave has to come back up. And till finally when we hear the sound up here, H-E-A-R, when we hear the sound at the top, the time that has elapsed will be two seconds. Okay, so it's going to be the same as in the prior problem. Seconds. Now you might say, well, how does this calculation differ? Well, the thing is, if this whole loop took two seconds, meaning the loop from the point of release, it traveled down, and then the sound wave was produced and that required time to travel back up, then what we realize is that we realize that the distance here or the time it took to fall, right, from the point of release all the way down to the splash should be less than less than 
the two seconds, right? So we calculated before in part A, um, let me just label that here, this was part A. We calculated the time, uh, excuse me, we calculated the distance assuming that the um, time was two seconds that it took for the rock to hit the water, but it's not. It's not two seconds, it's actually less. Because if we're perceiving the sound in two seconds, that perception took two things. It took the time in which the rock actually hit the water, and then it also took the time for the sound wave to travel back up the well, right? So let me write a formula, right? So I can create a formula that might sound like this. So the total time, okay, from the time of perception of the sound should equal the time it took for the rock to fall plus the time it took for the sound wave uh, to travel up, right? Okay, so that should make sense. That's basically what we were just describing. So in terms of now, um, let me just plug in a number, right? We know the total time here, the total time from the point at which it was dropped to the sound wave being produced and returning back was two seconds, 2.000. Okay, and that should equal now, and I'm just gonna abbreviate here slightly, the time for the rock to hit the water plus then the time for the sound wave to travel back up the well. Okay. So this is one equation that we're probably going to need, okay? Now, the second part of this is actually really important. And I think this is, well, the first part here, identifying this thing about the time is important, but the second key critical part is, now, how do I, how do I find out, how do I find out these times? Um, and we have to find something in common between, between the time the rock fell and the time that the sound wave traveled up. So again, if I draw a simplified picture down here at the bottom, okay, now remember, the rock is going to fall some distance, right? So I'll call that distance x, okay? And since it's traveling down, word, actually I'm going to call it negative x, okay? So it's traveling some downward distance. I mean, technically what I should be doing here, if I'm talking about y values, I should be using the term y, but I'm just being a little lazy. We'll worry about that in the next chapter. So now it's traveling downwards, right? So I'm just calling it negative x. And also then the sound wave that's being produced here is traveling back up. So how far did the sound wave have to travel back up? That's right, positive x now. So wait a minute, so what's in common between these two uh, frames of the problem? Well, the commonality is the displacements is the x's. That's the key. So watch what I'm going to write. So isn't it true that the displacement, by the way, the negative displacement, right, of the rock falling, shouldn't that equal then the positive, because the sound wave is traveling now upwards, the positive displacement of the sound wave rising? Right? That's, that's true. The displacements are equal. That's the important key. So now, now we have an equation. So now what we're gonna be looking for in the upper right hand corner. So now we gotta start thinking about some of these formulas, which formulas I can use to start plugging in to help me expand this formula a little bit. So, um, this part, this could be like a little bit of a guessing game or whatnot, uh, but what we can do is we can kind of consider um, let's think about what's going on in terms of the rock falling. Well, the rock is falling a certain displacement that we that we talked about here, right? It's falling a certain amount here, right? It's falling a certain amount. What else do we know? Well, we also know that the initial velocity, right, is zero. We also know that the acceleration is 9.8. Essentially, we know everything we did over here in part A, right? We just know that it's not two seconds anymore, okay? So those are the assumptions, and not the assumptions, those are the knowns. So what I'm gonna do here is in, instead of actually writing um, this displacement function, what I'm going to do is substitute in the rest of equation number two. So take a look at the top. I'm gonna substitute this whole term in for my x, okay? So now it's gonna look like negative. So now I'm gonna write the initial velocity of the rock times the time it took for the rock to fall plus one half 
times the acceleration that the rock is experiencing multiplied by the time that the rock took to fall squared. Okay, now what am I going to do? Let me use, why don't I use the same formula now for the, um, for the uh, sound wave rising? So let's see. So equals then, right, I don't even need the parentheses, equals the initial velocity of the rock rising, uh, excuse me, of the uh, sound wave rising, okay, multiplied by the time it took for the sound wave to rise, plus then one half of the acceleration of the sound wave rising, multiplied by the time that it took for the sound wave to rise squared. Okay, now let's see if we can cancel some terms or get rid of some stuff. So let's take a look at this. What's the initial velocity of the rock when it's released? It's zero. So guess what happens to that term? It goes away. So now let's see if we can start simplifying it a little bit. So now this is negative, right, one half. What's the acceleration that the rock is experiencing? Right, negative 9.80 because it's gravity. What's the time that it took for the rock to fall? I don't know. So just leave it tr squared. Okay, so it's getting a little easier. Now take a look at the right-hand side. What's the initial velocity of the sound wave? Well, the sound wave, it told us in the problem it's 332 uh, meters per second. Okay, so is that the initial? Well, yeah, it's the initial speed. It's also the final speed. Why? Well, because sound doesn't experience an acceleration here. Gravity's not pulling on it. So the initial velocity of the sound wave is going to be 332, right, 0, 0. What's the time? And then that's multiplied by, right, the, the time that it took the sound wave to rise up, which we don't know yet. That's fine. Plus then, what do you think about this term? What's the acceleration that the sound wave is experiencing? Zippo. There's no acceleration on that sound wave. So that's gone, right, because it's, it doesn't have any mass. So there's no, gravity's not pulling on it. So that whole term goes away. Okay, great. So now I'm left with this equation. So why don't we clean it up, make it look pretty? All right. So let's uh, do some math on this side. Okay, so we'll get, I'm actually going to write the results on the upper right hand. Uh, well, right here, I'll write some results. So negative a half times negative 9.80 should be then a positive 4.90. That's tr squared is equal to now 330. 2.00 TS. Now look at this. Here's one formula, and guess what? Here's my other one in terms of the star. I'm going to write them right next to one another. 2.000 is equal to TR plus TS. So what do you notice? Well, you might notice in one case I capitalized the T's, in one case I lowercased them, but uh, that, that would be valid. But if you notice, uh, the capital T and lowercase T, they're the same thing. But now I have two equations with two unknowns. We can solve this now. This is just a simple system of equations. So I can solve it. This is great. So why don't we do this? Let's solve this equation for TS. So subtract the TR. Okay, so now I would have TS equals 2.0000 minus TR. Now what can we do? Now we can take this result since it's equal to TS and plug it into this equation. Awesome. Great. So let's do that. So now that equation is going to become uh, 4.90 tr squared is equal to 332.00 multiplied by 2.0000 minus tr. And let me just lowercase that tr, by the way, just so that they're all consistent now. Great. Let's do some distribution. 4.90 tr squared is equal to then, so this is just double it, right? And we're going to have to have, it looks like five sig figs. So this should be 664.00 minus, oh man, so many sig figs. So I'm just, forget about the sig figs. tr, I'm running out of space. Okay. Uh, now what I realize is I'm probably going to be dealing with a quadratic. So let's get all of these terms on over to the other side. So we got to subtract them or add them. Right, so I'm going to write the result down here at the bottom. So we're going to have 4.90 tr squared plus 332 tr minus 664 is equal to zero. Now what can I do? Well, here's your a, here's your b, here's your c. 
plug it into the quadratic. All right, so I'm going to plug it in. I got a program in, the, in my calculator. So let's plug in A is 4.9, B is 332, C is negative 664. And I get a value of now, so T, there's two values, but just reject the negative one. I'm not going to write the negative one because I'm running out of space. Just reject the negative one because the uh, time has to be positive. So we got 1.94 seconds, and that's TR. Now that should make sense, right? So remember, the total time was two seconds but between the time the rock fell and by, time, uh, by the time the, we perceived the sound. But that includes the time it must have taken for the sound wave to be reflected, right? Back up the well. So the true time, the true time that it takes the rock to hit the water is 1.94 seconds, which is slightly less than the two. So finally, now it says to calculate the distance. So guess what we're going to do? We're going to do the same thing we did basically up here in part A. But instead of using my two seconds, I'm going to use now the 1.94. Okay, so I'm just going to rewrite the equation I used here. So the, um, the displacement is equal to the initial velocity times time plus one half acceleration times time squared. Right, my displacement is what I'm looking for. The initial velocity was zero, so that whole thing goes to zero. Plus one half of the acceleration, which is negative 9.80 multiplied by the time squared, which is 1.94 now, squared. Okay, just plug it in. So take out the calculator and let's do 0.5 times negative 9.8 times 1.94 squared. And it's now negative 18.4. So there's now negative 18.4 meters. Okay, and that is indeed the answer. All right. Um, as far as the distance, that's the technical displacement in terms of its sign, but you know the distance value would just be 18.4 meters. So notice that if we don't take into account the, the time that it takes the sound wave to travel back up, we overestimate the true uh, height of the well here, or at least the distance between the rock and the water. All right? So guys, thanks so much for tuning in. I hope this helped. Challenging problem, but I think you did well. Actually, I have no idea how you did, but I'm assuming so. All right. Please remember to subscribe. I'll talk to you soon.